Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are working our way through Star Trek in its entirety, more or less, and we are on the movies, because normally we, you know, normally I'll say, oh we're on Star Trek's, you know, the original series, season, whatever, this is not that, we are done with the show, we're on the movies, this is going to be the fourth movie, this is Star Trek 4, The Voyage Home, so. You sure about that? You sounded pretty unsure. I almost said the search for Spock because it's late <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking of the different movies. It's a thing that's happening. Look, we're going to talk about Star Trek 4. Uh, we'll start spoiler free. We'll give you a warning in the middle before we go into spoilers. And that's what we're going to do. So, yes. So, yeah, Star Trek 4, the one with the whales and the one with the time travel to come back in time and find some humpback whales so we can save the Earth. That's the plot of Star Trek 4. <laughs> Sounds really silly when you say it like that. It- does but i really like this one good because i really like this one too okay good i was i wasn't <laughs> sure if that was just me um in fact uh our friend james who who uh you, you at home won't know but connor knows uh he he tweeted at me i i do i, I as i've been watching these these movies i've been you know, tweeting out an image of the blu-ray and like yeah i'm watching this thing and james responded to that tweet with oh good the best movie ever made completely serious just completely dead serious i thought you were gonna say oh good the best star trek movie and i was gonna say i might not disagree with him <laughs> he's he's being a uh, hyperbolic of course but yes yes um, you, know, you know you say uh, our viewers at home won't know who he is well they could go and join the malfas facebook group and get to know the crazy bastard i don't know if i advise that <laughs> it might not be the most do so at your though. own peril I but you know, seriously, thing. Um, I also really like this movie, and I think it's full of delightful moments. I think it's got a really fun plot. It's a nice change funny. of pace from the last couple. It is very funny. There's some uh, <laughs> colorful metaphors, for example, <laughs> uh, throughout. The hell there is. <laughs> At one point, Spock, they're on the bridge of the ship, and Spock just like. Kirk says, "Oh, you checking those numbers or something?" He's like, "I damn well am, Captain." <laughs> <I'm> like what? <laughs> it's so weird to just just have Spock throw the word "damn" into a sentence like that, just yeah, yeah. willy nilly. Because uh, they come you back have to curse, because otherwise yeah. no one's going to listen to you. Uh, yeah, apparently in the eighties, no one listens to you if you're not cursing left and right. Uh, but I believe that it's present day for the time the movie was made, which is nineteen eighty six. Uh, they go back to San Francisco, uh, 86, to find some whales because there's this big, uh, you know, ship, this big drone that's coming towards Earth and it's sending out this signal which is not only knocking out all electronic devices but it also starts to vaporise the Earth's water. And of course, if all the water goes away, we're screwed, right? Bad things happen. <laughs> Death. <laughs> Death happens with no water. That's just how it works. <laughs> it usually is, yeah. And yeah, and of course, our crew are actually on a Klingon ship coming back from um, from Vulcan. Do you know what, actually, one of the things I really like about this movie is that there's no quick "here's a new Enterprise," right? And sure, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that sure at the end of the movie they get a new Enterprise, right, for for the next one. But that's just a little epilogue thing. The actual movie, there's no we need to have an Enterprise. It's like no, no, no. We're just, just we have the Klingon ship, and that's all we've got. What do they call it? Uh, HMS Bounty. Yeah, the bird of prey, the the, the HMS bounty, yeah. and but basically they're like, wait, we can try. We know how to do time travel because they established that in the show. That's just one of the things we were impressed by early on in the show is they established how they could accomplish time travel because they do it by accident almost. Uh, yeah, and, and, the and show. then they're like, oh, we'll remember that, and they did. And they go back in time to 1986 because it's the you know before uh, whales, the humpback whales specifically went extinct. In the twenty first century, um, now the, the the movie does have a, maybe a little bit um, of a save the whale steam uh, throughout. There's at one point they go to the the aquarium and there's a like a, you know the, the tour guide uh, Jillian who becomes a main character, but she's giving a speech and there's like footage of whales being killed and like skinned and things. And it's like, all right, we we get it. Gee, stop it. <laughs> yeah, but it. I don't hate it. As far as messages go, it's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, it's a fine message. I don't have a problem with the message. Um, I think that particular scene though does get to the point where it's like, okay, we're starting to feel like a, a child's like. Yeah, yeah, but I know, think that's the only scene where it, where it is. Yeah, no, that's fair. No, it's, it's just it's just that one. But it 
it, there is that that moment where it just feels like it's dipping over that line a little bit. Um, it's not a bad message yeah. to have though. I, I, I can't fault the, the hey, stop being dicks and hunting endangered species. Um, all you, all you dicks hunting tigers and elephants, basically go jump off a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Colourful Seems metaphor. Seems like a pretty reasonable request, right? <laughs> I, I had a very specific color, colourful metaphor I wanted to use in that sentence, <laughs> but it goes over the line for YouTube's policies. So yes, it is not family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what's funny about this is that Star Trek Discovery has some f bombs in it, and I was thinking about that as I was watching this because in this particular movie, it's actually kind of weird how they're dropping words like uh, like dick, damn shit. Um, I think at one point, uh, what was it? Kirk shouts to the the, the driver. Uh, I don't remember. I was dumbass. He calls him a dumbass. He's like, oh, oh yeah, two dumbasses dumbass. to you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, to double you. Dumbass. But he, just hearing them say that felt so weird because they've just these characters have never said these things. Yeah, in the show, and I just started thinking about Tilly and Star Trek Discovery dropping f bombs, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, but that still felt natural enough. Yeah, in the show it did. Yeah, and yeah. The, the way the other character reacted to it, and that it was like, oh, we don't usually say these things anymore, but but okay, maybe now is an appropriate time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, colourful metaphors, and <laughs> Spock's not very good at it. Uh, so, so we have we have that. Um, we have the the present day setting, which is which is a really nice thing. I mean, obviously the show did that a couple of times, but it's still a nice thing to do, just to sort of ground it and have have the fun fish out of water elements in in both ways, because you have the fun of them being fishes out of water at first, with and no puns intended, by the way. I know. Uh, I was Wh- whales I was aren't going even to fish. See how long you address yeah. it. Whales aren't even fish, so it's not even like I'm making that much of a pun, right? <laughs> I know, but it was it was there, just sitting, floating. But, but so so because it's there, but I mean, there's there's the moment where they're, he's pawning the uh, the the antique glasses. Yeah, um, glasses. Yeah, so he's got his glasses. Yeah, and the the, the the pawn guy's like, oh, "I'll give you a hundred dollars for it." And it's just this awkward pause, and Kurt goes, "Is that a lot?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's not, not really. <laughs> no, but I like the way it plays to the to the pawn shop. I remember going, "Is that a lot for these glasses?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just kind of like, eh. <laughs> "It's all right, it's all right." <laughs> it could be yeah. worse. Yeah, uh, but it's because he div- he divvies it up between like four teams of them because they all split into teams, and I'm like, "That's like twenty five dollars per pair. That's not a lot. <laughs> That's yeah. you get very far on that." Uh, but. You know, so so there's that fun stuff, but then once Jillian starts to learn about why they're there, and she starts poking into what they're wanting with the whales, and she kind of learns various things. It's like now, then she becomes the fish out of water because she starts to be impressed by the actual, you know, the, the ship and the time travel and everything else. Uh, so you know, it's got a nice message. It's funny. Uh, it's fun. I, I think just that the plot is yeah. just it's just a fun plot. There's there's nothing more funny to me than Chekhov going around the streets of San Francisco going, uh, "Where are the nuclear vessels? We want the nuclear vessels." Can you help me? He goes up to a police officer. like, "Hey, just, I, I'm Russian. I know we're he, well. He doesn't know he's in the Cold War right now, but he's like, no, I, I know we've got the Iron Curtain. I, I know we're right in the middle of this. I mean, we're, we're not in the middle. It's towards the end, but you know, just the idea of in the mid '80s a Russian going around San Francisco, going, where's the Dukes, folks? Where's the nuclear vessels? And I love how Uhura, who's with them, doesn't even un- like doesn't even question it either. She doesn't know why this is a big deal. She's just like, "Can someone help us find nuclear vessels, please?" <laughs> that was killing me. Like genuinely, like this movie is hilarious in 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 the right way. Yeah. Um. So no, uh, it's super fun. Um. It does deal with a lot of things that happen. You know, it has this 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 case, this hearing about Kirk at the start and the end about everything that's happened in two and three. Which is why, you know, when I was talking last movie, I said how 2, 3, and 4 feel like a trilogy because all, they all kind of fall straight on from one another. And it feels yeah. like all the events, because, you know, we're, at the start it's a Klingon being like, no, he killed Klingons, he killed our ship, he stole our ship, uh, and he, he was making this Genesis weapon. I, I really like that scene. So did I. I, I and I, I love Sarek coming in to defend them as well. Yeah, it's it's kind of not out of place with the rest of the film, but it's very separate to the rest of the film for the most part. But just... You know, seeing how okay, this is the Federation court system almost, and how that operates. I yeah. was really into it. No, I liked it as well. I, I, I and I, I like the stubbornness of the Klingons not to just because because we know that Christopher Lloyd's Klingon in three was a bit of a lone wolf who was going renegade with his with yeah. his plans. He wasn't like there under like Klingon because at one point he said something along those lines. Uh, they're doing this under their own free will, um, and the Klingons could just say, "Yeah, this guy was a rogue agent. We didn't, you know." sanction this you know so apologies but 
you know, whatever. Nah, fault. But instead, yeah. no, they're fighting for, like, no, give us his Kirk because he killed some Klingons. And Sarek's like, you know, he did kill Kirk's kid and he did kill other people. He killed another Starship. You know, another st- the Starfleet yeah, yeah, science they, ship they got destroyed. They murderers. Yeah, so they did murder people. You know, we would consider that, you Klingon bastard. Um, sorry, cl- yeah. colourful metaphor. <laughs> is that it now consider that your colorful metaphor yeah yes exactly um so no uh do you know, it's funny i thought spot was going to get his old hat again to tidy his ears but instead he just rips off a bit of fabric and just has like he has like a headband it's like a tennis headband i was gonna say it's more like a karate head i was thinking karate kid the way he had it kind of okay, yeah, yeah. tied it um especially since he does the uh i think i think it was just the the actual fabric of it which reminded sure. me more of a, like a, of a sweat band. I think that can be with the, the grip that he does on the punk on the bus, and then everyone cheers because he, he, they shut the punk up. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm with him. I like punk music, but I hate people who blast out music. Do, do you know what I love about this? Is that things haven't changed. The, the only difference is now instead of a boombox, everyone can do it on their phone. <laughs> that's the only thing that's changed. Well, yeah, which means even more people are doing it. That's true, yes. Everyone can bloody do it. Yes. Always, there's always one prick at the back of the bus blasting out some shite music uh, another fun element i really love is we get mccoy into a hospital into a 20th century hospital just for him I'm to complain horrified. about how medieval everything is to him because uh, he, he passes an old woman who's like what was it it was a kidney dialysis kidney, i think kidney dialysis, yeah. yeah and he's like dialysis what is this? The Dark Ages here. Drink this. You'll be right as rain. Call me. Feather goes sure. wrong. And it's as they're leaving the hospital, she's like, oh, that's the one that saved me. I feel fit. Because the doctors who are with her like, it re grew me. It grew me a new kidney. <laughs> the doctors who are with her like, I don't know how this happened. Something happened. She's fine. It's a miracle. Oh, man. I, I, I really love this movie. <laughs> Oh, it's cool. Oh, I mean, it's setting you up for failure because five is the worst one by far. But <laughs> oh, good. oh, good. <laughs> Something to come down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm avoiding talking about certain things for spoilers' sake until we get to spoilers. But um, I mean, if I if I was to critique it, if I was to critique it against the other films, I think out of the four, it has the least interesting score out of, out of them. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, I love the score in motion picture. I don't like two and threes as much, but it's very consistent across the two of them. Uh, James Horner's sort of darker score. This feels score. a lot more generic. Yeah, this feels a little bit more generic by comparison. I would say that the start and the end when the actual Star Trek theme kicks in, and that's where it kind of livens up a little bit. I wonder if it is because they're back in present day, they think, okay, let's rein it in and do a more of the time uh, score instead of all the, the space themes and opera, operatic things that we have throughout on the other ones. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I think that's that's presumably it's the only thing I can think of as the choice, mm. and I understand that it's just more boring. Of course, the marine biologist uh, Jillian is a bit of a, a love interest because Kirk's not actually had much of a love interest in these movies so far. Kind of funnily enough, like that's something yeah, we did all the time weird. on the show, but we kind of have one here with uh, Jillian. Uh, notably, I was referring to her as the the child's play mother uh, throughout because that's that's the thing I know her from. She's she's the mum of Andy and child's play. Essentially, making her the protagonist. She's the protagonist of the first movie. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing it. You're not seeing it. Yeah, well, that's her. I'll tell you word for it though. Um, but yeah, so so we get get a bit of the romance stuff there. Uh, very little questioning actually. Uh, they don't seem very concerned with causing ripple effects of changing things in the past. There's a few examples. One with Jillian is a big one, uh, mm. but there's also some other stuff with Scotty and McCoy because uh, they need to get like plexiglass they, for the time. They tank. do address it. They address it slightly. <laughs> they address it and then go, ah, screw it. Screw it. So what? This guy invented this now. It's fine. Whatever. Because uh, <laughs> uh, basically, because they have no money, they're essentially making a deal so they can get a bunch of plexiglass for free uh, by giving them this formula for uh, transparent al- aluminum. So it's whatever. Yeah. Joe, uh, you know, no, it was. It's one of those where they play it off as a joke, but could be true. <laughs> almost he's like yeah, yeah they're like well you know but what we're we gonna do now this guy has the footman and scotty just goes well how do you know he doesn't invent it anyway i feel like scotty should, should maybe know that fact actually who did invent this material that's very important in the future yeah not in, not important the, <laughs> the material is important but yeah who cares if it, if, it, if it's such a big deal, but he wows him. Um, uh, that scene also does have Scott using a computer um, 
in in the twenty first or twentieth century, where he just he, he sits down at a computer and he's just like computer, hello computer, and the guy's just standing there looking at him. Like, and McCoy hands him the mouse. Yeah, and, and he thinks it, it's like a microphone. And he's like, oh yes, yes. Oh, I don't think my cables on. Oh, it is. And he's like, computer, hello computer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will say uh, their plot has one of the best visual gags of the movie. It's as they're going off to find the place last they're like, now where are we going to find that? And then it just you, it looks as like a big massive yellow pages building. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. I was yeah. like, dated um, reference, but funny. Hey, that still exists. <laughs> Barely. I mean, sure, it's ye- yell.com though. It's maybe more the... The, the thing yeah, you go to, but have still. you got a yellow pages recently i haven't seen one in, since i was like <laughs> and at least in my early teens maybe even they, they that. have gone from thick enough to that you could kill a horse with to <laughs> okay i guess i could use it as a fly swatter <laughs> that's because it's just a little website <laughs> links probably <laughs> here probably. go here go here here's where you go for this p- piece of information that uh, would make sense yeah yes um but no, no the movie's super fun. Uh, it's, it's hard okay. to it's hard to fault in terms of enjoyment. So yeah, so we got the spoiler warning, so we can start talking about more specifics and jokes and stuff like that. Um, so like like I was saying, the, 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 there's no they all split up, and there's some fun jokes at the start where they're like, "Oh, how do we like not blend in?" Like they're all standing around looking kind of silly uh, <laughs> to the point where Kirk turns around and says, "Hey." You know, don't stand all together like that. You look really suspicious. And all, you look like you're waiting for a cadet review. And they they all just kind of start like just looking around like this, and they they wander off about three paces, and then like just stand around again. Yeah. And Kirk just shakes his head. He's like, "Oh, for God's sake!" So, yeah. So so Kirk and Spock go to the the marine place, which has the the, the whales, and again, actually, my favorite visual gag of this movie might be the moment. Where Kirk's still listening to the tour, and you just see Spock in the water with the whales doing a mind meld behind the woman as she's talking about it. It's uh, good. When like the crowd are all reacting, it, it's it's just Kirk with his hand over his. Going, oh, oh no! Oh oh! I'm, I'm not seeing this. It's not happening. <laughs> how do we how do we explain this? And she eventually sees it. He runs up and confronts them about it. Uh, and he and I, I like Spock's thing. Spock's like, oh no, I want to get the permission to take them to the future. So, you know, it's, it's up to them. We can't just force them to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm like, all right, okay, Spock does his thing. Um, and this leads to Kirk, you know, going to dinner with her and try to explain things. And he eventually is just honest, and she thinks he's crazy because, of course. Um, speaking of good he, gags, uh, cool. when this the ship because obviously the cloaking on the on the Klingon yeah. ship, and it lands in the park, and I like that there's like an indent of the leg. Or the foot, yeah, yeah. and the and the grass. I, I like that. A this lot. This reminds me of one of the few things that bothered me. Oh, okay, the ship is right there. Why are they beaming in and out? And they are because you yeah, know, they are. Yeah, Spock. You know, Spock's in the park. They drop him off of the car, and then he he has the you know the the transport beam come around him. Like the <clears> ship <throat> walk ten meters, you lazy bastard. Broad daylight, I guess they don't want to be seen climbing up there and the thing opening up and revealing that there's a thing there. I mean, sure, but he does just disappear in broad daylight. Yeah, but the opening of the ship's quite up top. It's quite high up. You can see that for miles. Sure. He's obscured you can open it from keys. the bottom as well, though, right? Eh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But you, you do see it's when Sulu, he's got the whole helicopter and he's, yeah, that's when the, he's the... delivering the glass and she's standing there and she, she notices, because she comes back to try and get Kirk because the whales get taken early and she's upset about it. Uh, uh, she comes to get Kirk and she sees Scotty like poking out the top of the ship with nothing underneath him and Sulu's like delivering the, the plexiglass through the, yeah. through the top. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, oh. Chekhov and Uhura are on, a, on the Enterprise as in the, the, the battleship. Yeah. No, I think... Uh... It definitely opens at the bottom because Kirk goes down to meet her and they, oh, they you're right, let her right. in. Yeah, it's got a little like hangar bay at the bottom. I don't know. What so you want? I, they're just not, being lazy. This is not a big deal. This is it, this is it really, but it might be the thing that bothered me most in the entire movie. This is nitpickery. It is nitpickery, which I mean is a testament to the fact that I really enjoyed the movie, but it really did bother me. It's nitpickery. Look, 
It's fine. Uh, so she becomes part of the team. She sees the inside of the ship, and then it's like, oh, we have to get Chekhov. Because Chekhov gets caught uh, on the... Because he's a Russian on a... <laughs> On a naval ship. Yeah, and he tells them who he is. He's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Chekhov. Uh, this is my, you you know, know, my officer number." This, so. this felt like a standard, you know, interrogation things. All he's given them is his name and rank. Yeah, but they're like, "Yeah, Starfleet Command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. United Federation of Planets. Yeah, very funny." And my favorite part of this scene is that the other guy there, who's not, you know, just in the room, one of the one of the the, the sailors or whoever, he sort of leads into the guy who's interrogating him. Goes, "I think he's a Ruski." <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't say <laughs> yes he is a goddamn risky and uh, Chekhov does a bit of a runner he runs away from everyone and he ends up falling off the edge of one of the one of the ships and hurts himself badly so they have Very to badly, get, sneak yeah. into a hospital uh, and by this point Jillian's on board and she's helping them with her 21st or 20th century knowledge I keep saying 21st because we're on the 21st and it's you know it's present day but uh and they're dashing around, and this is where we get all the fun uh, McCoy stuff. And they kick all the surgeons out, and he gets Chekhov up with some, you know, twenty third century science. Do. Yeah, uh, as you do, and they all have to all have to escape. That sequence was really good because I, I I was worried that McCoy was being underutilized because he was away from Kirk and Spock for the first chunk of the movie, or at least the first chunk on the Earth. Yeah. Uh, but this was like, no, here's here's his time to shine. Here's his bigger moments. Oh, yeah, his him just being horrified by everything you know the the two guys in the lift oh yeah the doctors debating on their treatment for cancer and and he's just like this is this is like the spanish inquisition (laughs) he's like chemotherapy what (laughs) these savages (laughs) (laughs) just him being so horrified by it is fantastic we have to talk about uh, Spock as, a, as an arc because Spock, of course, starts off this movie not being fully like himself. He's, he's kind of there, obviously, to a point, but he doesn't have his feelings yet because his mother even asks him, like, how do you feel? You know, computer asks him, how do you feel? He's like, no, you're half human. You do have feelings. And he's like, feelings are illogical. And he's, he's, he's not calling Jim Jim. He's calling him Admiral. Admiral. And, yeah. and he's like, no, you call me Jim. Remember Spock. And they're kind of making fun of him over the movie, and obviously by the end he he does like stand with his t- you know, when, when they stand trial at the end when they come back to the future, uh, like he comes up with them and says like, no I stand with my 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 team and then to Sarek he's like no they're they're my friends so because Sarek sticks up yeah. for them as well but he's like no they're my friends they're not, they're not just my comrades they're yeah. friends so you know he has I like that. the way he, he says, says the message to them is I feel fine which is it sounds so simple but it's like no no no. It means he feels. It means he feels, yeah. No, this is a really neat touch because I, I think that would feel cold coming from anyone else, but from Spock, that's like, whoa, he feels fine. Whoa, yeah. Okay, that's that's, yeah. that's, that's and it's, thing. it's that seems really nice from from Sarek acknowledging that Do you know what they're not they're not so bad. Yeah, no, that, that was a really nice scene. I, I like that stuff with Sarek. And two of my favorite Spock scenes are, are unsurprisingly with McCoy. Uh, one is McCoy's with him and he's asking him various things about what he, re- what he feels what he remembers uh, about what he's doing um, and was it Spock says something like uh, I'm receiving conflicting information or something like that and McCoy just sort of shakes his hand and goes yeah I'll bet <laughs> and walks, walks up uh, yeah. there was that and then there was one, the one like that there was, there was the, both of them were in the, 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 the ship uh, one, yeah. one was towards the start one was towards the end uh, because he was sitting next to him the whole time. That was the thing. McCoy didn't have a med bay to go to, so he was on the bridge, just around <laughs> yeah, with yeah. everyone else. Um, but no, it was, it was, all that stuff was really good. They, they're splitting up. They all had their own little thing to do, which was great. Yeah. I think for for me, for the the McCoy and Spot one, uh, it was nice when when he came over to him and was like, "Hey, look, I kind of carried around your soul. Uh, it's it's great to have you back and out of my head." Yeah, uh, and he said, "Oh, I know. I couldn't. Uh, I, I had you in my mind, but I couldn't feel your shoes." Yeah, it's like okay, McCoy actually showing respect, which was nice. Yeah, and then by the end of the conversation, I think I think it was the same conversation here, getting so frustrated with him and walking off, because Spock essentially goes, "Well, if you want to talk about what I felt when when I was dead, you kind of have to die first, so we can compare." (laughs) Oh dear, yeah. But by the end of the movie, he's kind of old Spock again, uh, for the most part. That's kind of the thing. Uh, I mean, if anything, you could complain they get off too lightly at the end because, the, you know, the president of the, the Federation is basically like, well, given the circumstances of you saving the Earth and saving everyone's lives, we're going to let off all those crimes go, except one, 
which was the you know the this this of being direct orders, uh, which I think you agree, Kirk. You know, should be the chain of command should be respected, and there should be punishment for disobeying it. And he's like, yes, of course I agree. And because of that, we're going to demote you to captain. And you're going to have to take out a starship. And of course, I'm sitting there going, he knows he wants that. They, they know yeah, he's been. This is, it's a reward, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, and everyone in the crowd's like the, grinning because they all know he wants it. The only thing that I thought was weird. Yes. Is that Jillian's grinning? Yes, because Jillian but, shouldn't understand this to the same extent that everyone else does. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's the other big thing, of course, is that without much argument, Kirk's like, oh yeah, I guess you can come back to the future with us. She's just sure. like, well, hang on. There's no whales in the future. You need someone who knows about whales. And uh, it's a good point, and he admits, yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's not even a hint of discussion of, yeah, but what if you were supposed to stay and have a kid that led to someone else, that led to whoever you know like... yeah yeah which which is because we definitely had that at some point in the original series yeah there, there's no concern about the ripples through time that this might cause it's just no 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 um and then hey. the end she's like that's cool I got, i'm going on a ship science I, i'm gonna go do some catching up mm. uh can we even talk about the implications that this big drone this uh this probe was coming to check because it was. It thought it was weird that there had been no whale singing for the last like century or two. Yeah, it bothers me that we don't know anything about it. It's like okay, so there was an alien race of some capacity that communicated with whales long before humans existed. Because as they point out, whales have been around a lot longer than humans have. Ten, yeah, was it million years? They said. Um, uh, I so it's like okay, all right, that's an interesting idea, but we never find anything. It was just no, no. Once the day is saved, the, the whales sing. Everyone's kind of in the sinking Klingon probe, ship because the water flies off. Going okay, cool. There's whales. Yeah. Um. I also I love that you know Kirk because Kirk's kind of in the water for the most of the part. He's just kind of like dangling at the side. He pulls in Jillian right as a joke, and then everyone else kind of jumps in or gets pulled in, except Spock. And I laughed at this a lot. Kirk goes to pull in Spock for fun, like everyone else, and Kirk and he does eventually go in, but Spock like like hangs onto the the ladder at the side of the ship for as long as possible. He's like, "What were you doing, Kirk? Stop it!" Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all it's all very visual, but he's just he's holding on for as long as possible until he eventually gets pulled in. And then I sort yeah. of went, "You know what? They worked hard on that makeup to make sure those ears didn't like <laughs> react when the water, you know, like, I'm sure, you know, waterproof makeup, all the rest of it." I mean, but. I was like, okay, that was funny. It was funny that he like was like, what? No, I'm not going in. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> this is not yeah. logical. <laughs> oh man, this movie was so much fun. Got a colourful metaphor for you. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's good. I I I love Voyage Show. Voyage Show was this, this is easily my favourite of the four. Uh, well, not to spoil things in terms of ratings, but it's also my favourite of the four, and yeah. it was the first time I watched them as well. In my opinions. I think I think I have liked them all more this second time, having watched the original show. That makes sense. Um, but this is still my favorite of the four. That's cool. It's refreshing because obviously I wasn't as big on the last one as you. Mm. So it was nice to to get you know jump up to this. Yeah, it was funny because I mean I, I would have said that I wasn't really that keen in Search for Spock the first time, and the second time I think I appreciated that a lot more. I still had problems with it, and it's still the weakest of the four, I think, so far. But yeah. um, I would say I've liked all four movies up until this point. No, it's fair enough. When we get to five, we'll see how that goes. I, I don't remember much about it, but... It has a reputation. It has a reputation. I remember there have been some fun stuff with the characters, at least. So it's not, like, all terrible start to okay. finish. But... <laughs> there are... There are... There are... I'll just say one word. God. I'll leave it at that. So... <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, wait. I have a question. Yes. God or God-like? God. Oh, that's... Actual, potentially actual God. <laughs> oh, boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> but no, I I, uh, I love Voyage Home. Vo- Voyage Home is playful. It's fun. It still deals with the stuff from the previous movies. Um, it it has the arc there for Spock for him to come back, but at the same time, it doesn't focus the entire movie on it, so it doesn't feel like it bogs down the plot again. No, it's just kind of there. Yeah, uh, and I think more more so in the last one. Although the last one did a good job early on of making it feel like they're a little rogue team, and of course that's addressed in this one. But I I, I like that he's splitting them into all these pairs or or triplets to to go and deal different missions. 
it gave them all their own little subplot because i mean how often like in the show or even in the past movies did it cut to say oh here's just what Chekhov and and Uhura are doing for a plot very very yeah. little it's, it's not that common on trek so it's kind of nice to have to give them all their own little things for a while just on this didn't Uhura not go with them last movie didn't she, on, she kind of no, she was on Vulcan at the end of the last one. Oh, she was. That's all right. That, that was the rendezvous point. That's where she met them. You're right. That's, that's fine. I was just having a moment that, there for a second. That's why like... she was the only one in uniform. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'm, I'm with it now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, at the end of the movie, uh, they know they're getting a ship. They know they're going back out as a crew, but they don't know what ship they're getting. And then they're like, oh, maybe it's going to be the Excelsior. And Scotty's like, oh, not that bucket of bolts. What are you blasphemy? And I think Chekhov's like, oh, we're going to get like a freighter or something. It's going to be boring. Um, and then, you know, camera comes over. So not only have they given Kirk his captain rank back, which he actually wanted, they've rebuilt a ship for him that he loves. Yeah. I, I will say that the, the idea of him being captain again is a nice thing that's kind of been throughout all four movies. Mm. Like, you know, the, the first movie was him realizing that, that, you know, when he, when he went back onto the ship, he was like, no, 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 he should be the captain, not an admiral. It's funny, yeah, the movies in a way have actually had more continuity than the show ever did. Yeah. In terms of an ongoing plot, in terms of themes, in terms of things being referenced in the last movie. Like, the shows didn't really do that that much. Yeah. The original show. I mean, I I thought it was worth mentioning, because obviously 2, 3, and 4 have been very connected. Yeah, but even 1 is still thematically linked in with Kurt's character, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That was a big part of that movie. No, no, it's true. It's true. Uh, So it, it does kind of plays a conclusion almost you, you could end here theoretically and say oh no they're going to have continuing adventures as, as the original team yeah maybe, maybe we should have done <laughs> um that's it if i if i recall six but a pretty reasonable send-off as well um okay fair and right. it's important in plot points because it sets up because keep in mind by this point uh next generation was already on or yes. not actually no it started after this movie but by the it, time was, it, it was it was well on its way yeah, but by the time you know, so by the time we get to the fifth movie, it's already been maybe in season two or three. By the time we get to six, we're on like season four or five or something like that. A next gen, right? Uh, we're just doing all the movies before we go into next gen. We didn't want to because we questioned if we should like put the movies in between the seasons where they they fell. We but, thought about it, but we thought, well, we'll keep the characters chunks yeah. together. Uh, keep it neater, but so it's important because obviously one of the main characters on next gen is a Klingon. Uh, Worf yes. is is on the Enterprise, so. It was important to sort of the, for the movies to get to the point where that could maybe be possible at some point because obviously right now Klingons are still very much the enemy. The enemy, yeah. I mean, sure they're, they're showing they're, up to they're showing up to these hearings and treaties and stuff, but they're not. They're, they're still they're, very much. Yeah, they've got a peace treaty. We we we've established that, yeah. but it's tenuous still. Yeah, uh, and I think I think six. From what I recall, I don't remember much about six, but I remember that kind of you know dealing with that. Putting the peace into motion. Yeah. Um, so that's cool, but no, Vo- I love Void Show. Vo- 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 I-, I don't have much more to add about it. I-, I think we've nailed what it is. It's just so much fun. It's- I wasn't ex- because I knew this was, oh, this is the one with the whales. And yeah. I was expecting it to be kind of preachy, kind of stupid, right? Because it's the one with the whales. That's what <laughs> it's known for. But God damn it, I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, they're at the end, they're watching the whales, you know, the, 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 the fins coming up and, and, and splashing the water everywhere, and they're all happy, and they're all laughing and waving at them. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an 80s movie, and I kind of love it for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it for it. Uh, but I see, it has good character stuff with Sarek and Spock. Um, all the characters get their own little subplots, chances to shine. Um, it's sure they're all plot subplots. It's not like they'll have their own arcs, but they all have their own little plots to like get a chance to have their moments. You know, Scotty gets his moments with the formula. McCoy gets his stuff in the hospital. Check off and Uhura looking for the the, the vessels. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sulu. You know, the helicopter stuff. Like him talking to the guy and they're like, oh, it's, he's like, oh, so this must be old stuff to you if you use this in the academy. He's like, oh yes, this is old, <laughs> ancient. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. like all that stuff was delightful. Um, it was. So and you know and I like Dillian. I think she had good chemistry with Kirk and she's a really good addition. Yeah, a little disappointed that we're probably never going to see her again. That kind of sucks. Yeah, and they kind of address that though, where he kind of like sees her off at the end, and he's he's you know, and she's like, oh, I'm just going off on another ship and doing my thing. I've got 300 years of like science to catch up on. I need to yeah. go and brush up. I get it. Just a little disappointing because she was a really good addition. To be fair, they did like have Savic briefly at the start to send her off. She's still on Vulcan. Uh, a whole 30 seconds. Which is fine. I get it. Yeah. It'd be nice if it was still Christy Alley. But, you know. Yeah. More than I expected, though. It is, it is what it is. 
Um, and I, I like the idea that even though Kirk's still very much the leader of the team, it was a vote. Do we go back to Earth and like face consequences? You know, he treats things more like a democracy, even though he's the one kind of making the decisions and leading them yeah. uh, at any given point. Um, so it's nice, and it's nice that we're at a point where they feel like this, where oh, we can be our own ragtag little group, and like we're not just following each other's orders because of ranks and commands anymore. Like, you know, we're, do- we're doing it because we trust each other as a unit. Mm. Uh, and I'm not saying it didn't feel like that necessarily in the show, but like, I feel like now they're more of a family as opposed to maybe like season one of the show where, yeah, but they've, they've been working together for so long. Yeah. Right. At this point. Um, you know, but Kirk will make, make jokes, you know, you'll slap Sulu in the arm, you know, <laughs> when, he, yeah. when he says something cheeky or something. It feels like a lot more informal. Yeah. Um, and I like that. It feels like a, a progression. Uh, I agree. So that's nice. Uh, but I, I guess we'll rate we'll rate the voyage home. So what would you give the voyage home? I'm, go, I'm going with a nine. I am also going with a nine, which is the highest rated Star Trek movie that we've had yeah. so far for for both of us. Uh, which is oh wait no because Wrath of Khan give an eight point five. Yes, it's the highest. I, I like this yeah, more than Wrath of Khan, which may be blasphemy to some people, but I do. Uh, I, no, I agree. I, I also gave Wrath of Khan eight point five. I think. Yeah. And then the first one eight, then eight point five. So yeah. Yeah, I think I've went eight, eight point five, seven, then nine. So it's it's a pretty solid out. Pretty similar because I think batch. I just went with a six on the last yeah. one instead. Um, but so yeah. no, I'm I'm down. So I'll be curious to see what my reaction to because I don't really remember a whole lot of five and six. I remember a couple of key moments in five. Not necessarily probably the... a couple of the more stupid moments. Maybe it's usually how it goes. I remember how it starts as well. I'll just I'll also say uh, hover boots is a thing in five. Or how is this a bad movie? I, either either hover boots or rocket boots. I can't remember the exact. Uh, I guess either rocket way, boots. What you're doing is you're setting me up for something fantastic. Spock's wearing rocket boots. Look forward to. <laughs> I, how can this movie be bad? <laughs> but yeah so that is the voyage home we'll be back next time with uh the final frontier um and we will we will delve into that but by all means let us know what you think of the voyage home in the comments like and subscribe uh, if you want to support the show on the channel head over to patreon.com slash tv and you can do that over there you get these star trek discussions a week early and the one dollar tiers as well some other stuff um so we'll have a look see uh worth mentioning this is the first actual time we've had two movies uh two weeks in a row we've had weeks in between each movie up until now uh hopefully we can keep this going for a while if we, if we don't if we end up having a week off between two of them again don't worry about it but um we're getting we're gonna to got, them now we're gonna two more to go in yep. this batch so i mean i'm hopeful that we can get them done schedules looking promising yeah so we got we got two left and then we're on the next generation which is exciting in its own right but yeah there might there might be a week <clears> or two between the movies and next generation yeah uh but that is that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching sci-fi and star trek and space things and whatnot uh but that is us uh so see i'm trying to naturally progress into live long and prosper but it doesn't really flow into it from what i say no to all of you watching or listening with the exception of connor live long and prosper (laughs)